Sri Raghavendra, who started much in advance from Mantralaya, comes to Marga and Kote. The greatest blessing that Sri Raghavendra has bestowed on me is the joy that I derive most of the time during the year by having darshan of his Mrutika Brindavanas, Dhyana Mantapas, Shila Rupas and Seva Sanghas spread all over the country. Whether all those pleasant experiences can be covered in my writings is uncertain. But there should be no doubt at all that even to have such darshans and write about them, it is Sri Raghavendra's bountiful grace that one should be blessed to enjoy. Of course, I have the craving to write a guide to Raghavendra darshan at a later stage in which I shall be briefly covering all the places I would be visiting. I have been fortunate enough to know about and witness also the way Sri Guru Raja has been gracing the installation of numerous Mrutika Brindavanas and blessing many as a group as also individually. Though there was no opportunity for me to witness such mysterious deeds at various places, I have been at least fortunate enough to hear what the devotees had to tell about those at different places. A few places like Yereya Mangalam could be exceptions, but generally the development of a township precedes the establishment of a Mrithika Brindavana, the devout residents settled, settling in the place, getting the idea of installing a Brindavana and subsequently buying land for the purpose and arranging for the Mrithika and consecrating it in a Brindavana. In Marga and Kote too, all these had happened. But Sri Guru Raja in Mrithika Rupa had started his journey to the place much earlier, something rare indeed. On the eve of the Pratishthapana day, Raja Sri S. Guru Raja Char explained to the devotees how the Mrithika had come there and also certain other events relating thereto. On hearing those, the audience was left dumbstruck, which experience the readers will also feel on a perusal of what follows or as his talk. Sri Parimala Raghavendran contacted me 12 days ago and informed me that everything was in readiness at Marga in Kote, except the Mrithika. He said that the amount required for maintenance had also been arranged for and that the date for the Pratishthapana had been fixed too. I meditated upon Sri Raghavendra on hearing those and instantly an idea flashed in my mind. Sri Suyamindra Tirtha, my Purvashrama father, Pita Tipati of Sri Raghavendra Mutt from 1933 to 1967 had once shared with me an important information and it was my knowledge of it that sparked such idea at the back of my head. During his pontificate, he had once taken the Moolam Ritika from Mantralaya while proceeding on Yatra without any definite plan of Pratishtapana at some place. Reaching Nanjangud on the way, he then thought of doing its Pratishtapana there itself but Sri Guru Raja appeared in his dream and enlightened him saying, Suyamindra, since I am at this place in Shila Rupa, idol form, the Mrithika need not be installed here. Sri Suyamindra Tita asked him, What has to be done about this Mrithika Swami? Let it remain in puja here itself. At the appropriate time, I shall enlighten the person's concern as to where I would like to get ensconced in my Mrithika Rupa. Enlightened Sri Raghavendra, and so it was kept there itself in puja. And when Sri Parimala Raghavendran told me recently that Mrithika alone was needed here, I meditated upon Sri Raghavendra and at once was reminded of what Sri Suyamindra Tita had told me once. So I hastened to Nanjangut to make arrangements for getting the Mrithika to my house in Bangalore. And from there, it was carried to Dharmapuri yesterday morning and kept in Madurai for the night. Starting from Madurai in the afternoon, the Mrithika has reached Marga and Kote in the evening. The Pita Tipati of Sri Vyasaraja Mutt on invitation is here now. 
on tomorrow morning this sacred mrtika will be installed and consecrated here and what a blessing it is for you all the entire gathering then applauded the efforts of those connected with it shri sriamindra had entered his brindavana at mantralaya in 1967 and marga and kote incidents had taken place in 1972 subsequent to that only a madhva sangha was formed at that place in 1974 but that For the Margen Kote Mrutika Pratishtapana, Sri Guru Raja had started in his Mrutika Rupa from Mantralaya even before 1967 to proceed to Nanjan Kul is something amazing and beyond the ken of our imagination. It was Sri V S Venkatramana Rao who had sown the seed for this auspicious event, and how befitting it is. that his son shri parimal raghavendran should have caused its fruition accomplishing in just 15 days a thing that was held in limbo for many years even more astounding is the orchestration by shri raghavendra swami of causing shri suyamindra's purvashrama son shri raja s yes, guru raja cha taking the mrutika to margen kote the one that shri suyamindra had carried to nanjangur many years ago and how appropriate it was that shri v s venkatramana rao should have received at margen kote the mrutika brought by shri raja s yes, guru raja cha while harikatha kesari shri v s venkatramana rao was spreading raghavendra bhakti through his religious discourses shri raja s yes, guru raja cha too was involved in that divine service though in a different way through his writings when part 1 of shri raghavendra mahimai was published it was at the same time that shri raja s yes, guru raja chas kannada work was uh, too was released his writing on shri raghavendra was not published beyond two volumes for he is no more with us Sri Raghavendra would have already decided how many volumes of Sri Raghavendra Mahimai should come out. It's in accordance that uh, with that my longevity too would have been determined. And whatever is the way Sri Guru Raja guides me along, my journey will also follow that. Just as he had planned in advance about the Mrutika for Margen Kote for the publication of Sri Raghavendra Mahimai too. he will be the one to show the way that those who are unflinching in bhakti and soulful in devotion even in the midst of adversities will attain success in their efforts is incontrovertible margen kote devotees had pursued their efforts unceasingly despite all the difficulties they had to encounter which undoubtedly earned them the grace of shri raghavendra in the attainment of their goal while we should also endeavor to cultivate and drown ourselves in such devotion let us now turn our attention to a couple of noteworthy incidents that took place at margen kote from the time of the pratishtapana in 1987 one kusachar was doing the brindavana puja there later shri murli son of madhva sangha secretary shri narayan rao continued it with great involvement for many years despite his poor eyesight taking care to see that the abhisheka alankara naivedya and uh, swasti were observed meticulously in the daily worship of the brindavana shri murli and his family members have been hosting me at their home during my visits after shri murli came to know about me during my first visit to the place besides during my subsequent visits he was sending word to the devotees of the place to come and meet me praising my writings on those occasions one day shri murli had as usual adorned shri raghavendra with a garland of pearls during the daily alankara but lo the next day it was found to be missing when the alankara visarjana was done and how it could not be in its place was baffling and everyone thought that it could have found its way into the garbage heap along with the withered flower garlands 
so a thorough search was made in the accumulated refuses but all such efforts were in vain some devotees started praying guru raja are you not happy with that garland of pearls or with our alankara aradhana but such services in reality were off the mark as shri guru raja had longed to come there even before margen kote residence had planned for his mrutika brindavana pratishthavana there murali darchika was in torment every day even long after the devotees had got out of their mind the loss of that pearl adornment the brindavana precincts had a humdi placed at a prominent place for annadana collections and it was the practice to open it once in a quarter to take out the monetary collections and when it was being done on one occasion a big surprise was awaiting there for everyone for when they when they all espied the contents of the humdi the pearl garland was indeed staring before them as mysteriously as it had disappeared yes all those around were nonplussed at what they beheld perhaps someone tempted by its worth should have made off with it and must have later deposited it in the hundi consigned stricken like this another incident even more perplexing had also taken place there on ekadashi day since there is no adornment in gold and silver such valuable items had been kept separately under lock and key in the garbhagraha on one occasion on the following dwadashi day when the priest came early in the morning to open the brindavana door he found no necessity at all to do that as it had already been kept open and so to every other door and with great concern when he examined to see whether any valuables were missing there was not even an iota of gold or silver missing from the mud possessions well who had come there if it had been a thief the valuables would have certainly been lost perhaps an intruder had indeed come there and maybe sri guru raja had guided him in the right path preventing thieving or it could even be that sri guru raja himself should have gone to the well taken his bath early in the morning before performing sri lakshmi narasimha puja there indeed queer happenings like these vouch for the divine presence of sri guru raja in margen kote after some years a few devotees of that place start uh, started drawing that sri sushmeendra teertha who was the pitadipati at the time of the margen kote pratishthapana could not be present there on that auspicious occasion nor even visit the place any time later there having no uh, been no opportunity for him till then in 1986 when the margen kote devotees had gone to mantralaya for the mrutika sri sujeendra and sri sushmeendra were the pontiffs then in 1987 when the brindavana installation took place at margen kote sri sushmeendra alone was the pitadipati as sri sujeendra had entered the brindavana his brindavana by then the local devotees felt unhappy about the absence of sri sushmeendra at the installation the time at their disposal for bringing him there having been too short then sri sumatendra teertha had come to their place first for the anchaneya pratishthapana though sri suyamindra was not present for the brindavana pratishthapana the mrutika had been got through him only sri suvratendra guru of sri suyamindra it is said had camped at margen kote for about 4 or 5 months during his pontificate sri vyasraj ramat pontiff sri vidyapayoniti was present at the pratishthapana of the mrutika and likewise sri vidyananidhi teertha pitadipati of sri sri padarajamar had come to margen kote for the mandala abhisheka yet the public of the place had the lingering dissatisfaction that sri sushmeendra the pitadipati of mantralaya mat at the time of the mrutika pratishthapana at margen kote could not be present at their place at the material time nor even later but sri radhavendra 
despite delaying things thus fulfill the longings of true devotees at the time deemed fit by him that way for the mahasamprokshana of the brindavana 12 years after the pratishthapana shri guru raja caused shri sushmindra's presence at margen kote no sooner than the devotees of that place had gone to mantralaya and extended an invitation to the swami to perform that ritual through his holy hands shri sushmindra not only condescended to the requested a uh, request of the margen kote devotees but even brought the mool brindavana mrutika to that place and consecrated it in the brindavana at the time of the mahasamprokshana no doubt the residents of the place on that occasion shed tears of joy at the mercy of shri raghavendra the public felt exultant that the mool mrutika brought by two pontiffs shri suyamindra and shri sushmindra had been consecrated in the brindavana at their place seemingly suggestive of their being twice blessed by the presence therein of two mrutikas of shri guru raja undoubtedly orchestrated by shri raghavendra himself and passing on such message indirectly to his devotees there margen kote of such mysterious happenings is in kambam valley of madurai district on the madurai kambam route it is 3 km from chinnamanoor madurai andipatti theni chinnamanoor kambam is one route while another one is from dindukal via vattalangund uh, periyakulam theni chinnamanoor to margen kote shri guru raja is always present to guide the devotees to achieve whatever are their yearnings i would urge upon everyone to visit margen kote for submitting prayers to him and getting graced by him the fulfillment of all aspirations it's worth traveling to margen kote to have darshan of shri guru raja who is sitting in the midst of nature's beauty that the greenery around their presence shri anjaneya installed by shri sumati indra should also be had darshan of at that place without fail Though I have written about Sri Sumati Indra in Part Three, the late C K Venkatesh, the Purvashrama grandson of Sri Sujay Indra, ex-managing editor of Sri Guru Sarva Bauma, when he was alive, had often expressed his desire that a lot more could be written about that spiritually exalted personage, and to fulfil that, the next incident narrated. is also one associated with shri sumati indra apart from those recounted thus far pertaining to chitaldurg and margen kotai